All right, welcome back. So yeah, uh, this is a quick video. Um, been getting a few comments in a uh, few comments here on my channel. A bunch of guys, uh, do just new to the trade or just trying to get into the trade. They just want to. They've been asking like, um, what's the best way to get into the trade, generally speaking? Um, and I just wanted to share a couple thoughts, uh, just from my experience and how I did enter the trade. Any reg any regrets I might have had things I might have done differently and um, I guess I could just and from the vantage point of um, you know just training others and watching um, being part of the hiring process and things of that nature so yeah just a quick video I just wanted to cover that for uh, new guys out there people just getting in the field wanting to know is it necessary to get in, you know go to school and take training courses so um, we'll go ahead and cover that now stay tuned So first things first, um, like I said, I got a lot of people asking me, is it necessary to take a course um, or just go to an HVAC school of any sort? In my opinion, my humble opinion, I don't think so. I totally am like honestly completely against that. I didn't do it myself and I just don't see any need for it. Um, if that's something that you, you think you need or will think that will help. It's definitely not going to help you get your foot in the door, like kind of how, you know, con uh, what do you call it? Just conventional um, education system works where it's just like the diploma just gives you that kind of upper edge. I don't think that to be the case. Um, I think it's more about, in this industry, it's going to be more about just what you know and what you bring to the table and uh, how you perform. So... Whether or not you should go to school, I definitely think I think that's a waste of money, and honestly, a waste of time. Which more importantly, because you know, you just it's not necessary to be spending, you know, just unnecessary time on things that basically is just gonna, you can you're just going to learn in the field, and you can pretty much go on YouTube and learn the same thing, if not be even more, have an even more thorough exposure. On the internet and just studying reading books the refrigeration technology books and all these types of things so yeah there's just a plethora of knowledge and information out there don't get caught up in just the um, you know conventional processes of education and just think that that's gonna be what gets you the job or gains you respect um, in the field I mean, the way I look at it is like, why not get paid to learn, right? So instead of going to school, you just go ahead, start with a small company. Smaller companies are going to be quicker to um, elevate you or, you know, move you into different positions that you fit. So if you want to essentially say you want to be, do a service, a small company might start you off and install or just as a runner, parts runner or whatever. But if you put in the time and work after hours, they'll put you in the service pretty quickly. Unlike for, for a bigger company, they might go ahead and say, well, hey, there's a line for that. There's, you know, there's uh, lots of guys that are trying to get in that service spot, you know, because they're trying to earn their commissions or whatever, you know, or whatever politics are going on in these bigger companies. So I would go ahead and start, for, start off on a smaller company. Um, yeah, you might not have all the benefits. You could probably still get the same, if not more, pay off the bat at a smaller company. Probably similar. I don't know if you're going to get more if you got zero experience, to be honest with you. But you just never know. Yeah, but like I say, a lot of times you're not going to get all those health benefits and things of that nature. But if that's not a big deal to you, you know, just start off on a small company and show and prove. You know, put in the extra time after work, study. Learn all your refrigeration circuit, study electrical, study all the different aspects of what your, you know, the duct work, manual D. Just get deep into the studies, and I will guarantee you, if you do that, you will definitely be, you know, running service calls within probably a month, if, if that. You see what I'm saying? So, once you're in service, that's when all the learning starts because that's what you call the in the field training okay now you look at that like it's some sort of um you know lab if you're if you ever done college and you know, a lab is like the hands-on 
Um, so essentially, now you can parlay that into your proper education simply by just what I did when I first started. Anytime I would um, be heading out to the call, I'd call the customer, ask what their symptom was, try to get as much information from them as possible regarding the issue, and then I would just go ahead and Google it or put it in YouTube and find as many videos on those symptoms as possible and watch the video on the way to the call. If I, you know, if I had a little 20 minute drive or 30 minute drive or something like that, that's what I would do. And I would just do that until I got comfortable. And even when, you know, when you get to the call, instead of calling your um, manager or, you know, whatever superior who, owner, whoever, instead of calling and asking them simple things or things you can find out, just simply just Google what you're experiencing. Um, and there's plenty of forms, HVAC forms, things like that. And essentially, those are going to, that do, doing it this way is going to help to um, expedite just the amount of respect that you're gonna garner from your uh, employer. So that's very, that's the major, I think that's gonna be your major foundation, you know, to get you started. And like I said, if you do it this way, everybody's winning, you know, because it's just giving you a lot more confidence, you know, self-confidence in yourself. It's make, it makes the job more enjoyable, right? Like if you're learning, you know, rapidly and just, you know, coming across things and being respected by your peers, things like that. These are the things that give you the extra motivation to get up in the morning and say, you know, this isn't too bad. A lot of times what makes jobs miserable is just the the um, psychological abuse of it. You know what I'm saying? Whether you're dealing with the politics or you're dealing with, you know, uh, people that are power, uh, narcissistic, narcissistic type what do you call it, just abusers of power, things of these natures. So if you basically put yourself in a position to where you're just a little, you're well respected just based off of your what you can do and how you um, perform and just respect your craft, I think that right there makes the job a lot more desirable and a lot easier to get up and um, prepare for in the morning. Another really important thing about um, just starting out in this field is you got to have a, a thick skin you got to be you know just not too bothered by people and you know different types of personalities because you're gonna come across a lot of different type of personalities a lot of people that might just um, you know be really full of themselves or arrogant or just pride you know just having a lot of pride and I don't know just sometimes I've seen it I've, I've seen a lot of uh, situations where you know a lot of the a lot of the senior individuals might utilize or kind of um, use the younger or newer guys to boost themselves by kind of putting them down instead of lifting them up and I've seen it a lot I've been in that situation myself to be honest with you when I first started off and the thing about it is not to say that's how it all is but they're going to be here and there people that are like that. Now, if you can't shake that off, if you just can't swallow your pride and say, you know what, it is, this is, this is nothing, this isn't worth sacrificing my career for, this isn't worth sacrificing, you know, a future, then you're gonna, you're not gonna make it, man, because you gotta be able to let things roll up your back, because there's gonna be depending on the situation I think there's just gonna that that dynamic that dynamic definitely is going to exist and there's nothing we can do about it just deal with it don't let it affect you don't take it personal just realize sometimes people have their own issues sometimes people feel the need based off their own insecurities to you know essentially try to um, use you as a, a stepping stone so just go ahead and not to say get abused you're not gonna don't don't let people abuse you you're not gonna want to basically uh, let it discourage you okay so I say that to say I don't really have any good advice as far as how to handle it just try to be as, as, as uh, non-confrontational as possible when dealing with these types of people and uh, just kind of keep your distance from them. 
and you should be fine. And like I say, if you basically double up, if you definitely if you put in the time and effort to show and prove, then they're going to even come around after a while. They're going to be asking you how to do the job. Because most of the times people like that usually aren't that you know proficient anyway, and that's why they act that way. So at the end of the day, it'll come around and you won't have to really worry about it. So that's just another tip. Just be prepared for that type of um, interaction and don't, you know, just don't be thrown off guard by it. The other thing is, if you're, if you're trying to show your, the employer that you're serious, I would go ahead, if you don't have an EPA already, just go ahead and get that knocked out before you even start. Get the EPA. I wouldn't even go as far as doing all the Nate stuff, but at least have your EPA on deck. That's definitely going to give you a pay boost. Gives them a little more incentive to pay you because you can handle refrigerant. You just don't look as crazy trying to walk in there, you know, with zero experience, zero credentials. So just go ahead and get your EPA situated um, before you even walk in the door. And like I said, you don't have to. I didn't have my EPA, but I tell you what, my initial pay was garbage because of it because I didn't have any experience. Well, I had a little bit of experience, but and like I said, that was a big, that was a pretty substantial pay cut from my prior job but I already knew based off of working with my brother-in-law and him having a company I already knew what the ex what the potential pay was so I just knew it was just a learning process it was just me getting my foot in the door a stepping stone in the sense that the pay was going to be you know much better here soon so I took that little pay that little uh, pay cut and you know I say that to say once I got my EPA, my pay my pay did increase, um, and I got pay increases incrementally um, since. So essentially, it was definitely a smart a smart move to get it. And I wish I would have gotten it uh, first. But like I said, I got it within probably a week of. Um, I think I was two weeks before I had it after starting, so it wasn't a big deal. I mean, to kind of piggyback. You know, having your credentials set up, whether you're talking about the EPA or, you know, licensing of sorts, um, you definitely want to have some tools as well. Um, and that's just going to show your commitment. And I mean, that might be much. For, you don't even know if you want to do the job. You don't even know. This is something you're just trying to feel out. I get it. Uh, so is it necessary to have tools? I would at least want to have find some analog gauges some cheap stuff man a couple k type thermal couple type um probes just something you know to um just to show that you're you're you know you're ready to hit the ground running now if you know what you if you know this is what you want to do and you're pretty certain go ahead and max out and get the digital probes get the whole smart probe i recommend field piece myself testo make some jv and all these guys i don't know um Get you some smart probes, the whole setup, and then you know that right there alone, I think, is going to give you just a substantial. Uh, what do you call it? Just a a more respectable presentation, like they say, man. First impression is key. So if you have a whole kit right up the gate, walking in the door, you know how to use it. Um, you got your EPA. I mean. You, they're going to start you off decent, man. They're going to start you off with good pay. Um, and like I say, you're only going to you're only going to advance from there as you're showing and proving and, you know, basically uh, being uh, it's just being a valuable asset to the company. So what I'm just trying to do is give you insight on how to start with the best pay possible. What you do from there, that's kind of your choice but you can definitely affect your position and like I say it's hard to change the way you're perceived from that initial first impression so if you come in there totally green ignorant not knowing anything having to you know um, use the tool account to buy tools and all this type of stuff yeah that's how they're gonna perceive you even two years from now you're going to be the guy who you know is just just good. the green doesn't know anything even if you know basically more than the most senior tech there it's just hard to shake that first impression man you'll have to wind up basically getting another job in order to um kind of start from scratch and, and have that respect and pay 
So at the end of the day, that's just something to keep in mind. Try to start off a little higher. If you want to start off a higher pay, you're going to have to invest a little into that. Educate, get your EPA, get your credentials, get your tools and instruments, get those ducks in a row. That's going to maximize um, your potential earnings, at least for the first initial, first impression. And like I said, you got to take it from there. you got to still continue your education. Don't just rest on your laws and say, oh, I'm getting what I want. I'm getting what I asked for. Uh, no, you've got, if you want to still, you know, uh, maintain or even in, in advance, you got to keep on studying, keep on elevating, keep educating yourself. Um, no one's going to come out and give it to you. There's no one out here, you know, looking, looking for ways to uh, find you and educate you. You see what I'm saying? I mean, maybe myself, kind of. I mean, me having a YouTube channel, but that's, but that's beyond the point. Just um, focus on those th at least three things, and I think uh, you should be able to get maximum pay at least starting off. You know, and that's another thing. Like, practice on your own unit. Like, if you if you live in a house, you know, find your unit. Buy if you have got your probes or if you got your gauge or whatever. Your gauge set just practice on your own stuff check your temp splits check your you know put the psychometers in go through the system static pressure just do everything that you see on the videos get a lot of get as much practice as you can at home get I mean you can get a bunch of hands-on experience messing with your own equipment don't be afraid to just experiment on your own your own systems whatever you have I mean family members go to their houses Whatever you have to do, just get some hands-on experience. That way you feel comfortable when you get in the field and get in front of um, whoever's training you. You don't want to be getting in front of someone not even knowing how to screw, um, you know, screw a set of probes onto the uh, Schrader valves or not knowing how to use a drill or, you know, use a meter. Like, don't do that because that's not going to be, that's not going to work out for you very well. That's, and like I said, it's not the end of the world. You can do that and still do okay but what i'm telling you is this it's going to really tarnish the way that they perceive you and it's going to make it more difficult for you to you know uh, justify or demand um you know a certain pace so. and if you work on your own system you can that's actually hitting two birds with one stone because and it's not even it's not even like you're saying a lie like say you replace a capacitor or you know clean the blower wheel do these little simple things on the system and you'll be able to if they do ask if the if the employer asks and says hey do you have an experience you can basically simply tell them hey i, I work on my own system i you know change my capacitors i maintain i keep it you know maintenance i do my maintenance i clean my coils you know clean the coils on it like do all these little piddly things that's going to give you a little bit of experience that you can actually use that to your advantage man like and trust me, that's going to go a long way. That's not just um, fluff. They're going to say, okay, well, if they're doing those things, then they're at least usable. They're at least, you know, field ready. So just go ahead and get as much experience on your own equipment as possible. And um, whether you're, well, like I said, whether you're changing capacitors, cleaning the coils, checking your amp draws and bolts, just whatever type little things need to be done, do it. Buy your probes, get just cheap set if you have to, go off of eBay, use. I mean, I buy used equipment still. I'm not too, I'm not too proud to buy used equipment. You know, I wish I'd get sent some better equipment from, uh, you know, these higher end vendors, but yeah. Like I said, um, but yeah, that's a super important one right there. Get your, get your hands on drills, you know, practice stuff as simple as taking the screws out of, uh, you know the uh, the cabinets and you know little stupid piddly stuff like that practice replacing capacitors you know practice checking squirrel cages in the fan you don't even know if you have to try to replace the fan motors but just inspecting them and doing things like that man checking your bolts and amps all the most basic things just practice and before you even um, get out there and try to apply just see if you can get your hands on some equipment all right Another thing that's probably, I will, I'm not going to even understate this. I can't underestimate the value 
of um, this one right here. And that's just basic people skills, you know, soft skills, whatever you want to call it. Um, just being able to talk to people, being able to present yourself in a, in a professional manner, you know, just with, with confidence and just essentially, you know, eye contact, just all the, the standard things, man, that are kind of, that are becoming a dying art in this society. So you just want to practice just general people skills, general conversational skills. I don't know, man, like just how to talk to people, just practice that making eye contact, shake handshakes, all these types of, that could be the difference between you doing service and you not doing service. So I wouldn't, and like I said, it's not all about doing service, but if you're trying to do service and you don't have good people skills or you don't, you don't know how to look someone in the eye or you just mumble when you talk and things like that, that's gonna be, they're gonna, they're gonna basically count you out as far as dealing with customers, like period. You know, so it's one of those things where, I mean, I understand it's, you know, you're, you're being, you're a face of a company, so you need to be able to represent the company. You got to be able to hold yourself to a certain standard to where you're representing the company in a way that's positive, in a way that the owner of that company can um, foresee that or trust that you'd be able to do that. So yeah, that's a major, major tip right there, man. Don't ever um, underestimate the power of just being able to, um, just your people skills and just being a, a, pre a presentable person, presentable human being. Exciting. I guess lastly is just don't be afraid to ask for what you want. Like, there's no point of going through all these troubles and all this investment of time and money if you still pretty much, you know, just take the bottom dollar pay that they offer you. I mean, don't get me wrong. There's still probably, most people are going to still try to offer you, you know, a low pay just because you don't know anything. So, all I'm saying is these tips I'm giving you isn't to necessarily change what they offer you off the gate. It's more so to change or to give you a little bit more bargaining um, power if they do offer you a low price or a low um, starting wage. So they're going to be more inclined if you do, um, you know, have all those things in a row, whether you're talking about tools or, uh, you know, your credentials, EPA and all that, they're going to be more considerate if you ask for more money. They're gonna say, okay, well, you know what? They do have these tools. They do know how to operate the tools. They do have an EPA. Let's give them a shot. I'll give them the $20 now. I'll give them the 20, whatever, $25. I don't know if you're gonna start with 25, but this depends on your, uh, you know, depends on your market, uh, where you live. Like I said, more than likely, having these things set in a row isn't gonna basically necessarily make them or cause them to offer you a high wage off the gate but it will give you a little bit more um, bargaining leverage to ask for more so once again all of that stuff is nothing without you it's nothing if you're not prepared to ask for the pay that you want that you desire so just go ahead and don't be afraid to ask man don't be afraid to take a risk there's more there's more HVAC companies out here than there are of you for sure so if they if they turn you down you know go so try somewhere else but more than likely or you can meet you know you can negotiate meet somewhere in the middle so that's how it all works but hey that's pretty much it um I don't know I can't really think of anything else at the top of my head but if uh, you guys have any other thoughts, you know, veterans or new guys in the comments, anybody, just even people not even doing HVAC, if you have any other thoughts that you could add to it, please let it be known in the comments because that's what I do this for, man. That's what I create videos for. That's what I create content for, for educating. So I don't think I know it all, but we can all pretty much help each other just by putting the information all in the pot, man. That's what the comments are. So go ahead and throw those things in the comment if you have any advice. Uh, to give others that I can learn from myself. Yeah, other than that, if you have any other questions, if you need me to elaborate on anything, let me know in the comments below. And um, 
other than that, that's it, man. Please leave a like and a, and a subscribe, hit the bell. We'll see you on the next one. Thanks for watching.